Wales. Winter has arrived and the peaks of Snowdonia are covered in snow. Not far from this mighty mountain range, where the borders of North Wales and England meet, lies one of Europe's most important wetland sites. The Dee Estuary. Home to 100,000 wading birds during winter. Massive flocks of up to 50,000 birds. They are led by the knot, the estuary's most numerous visitor. Through twisting and turning in flight, they create these spectacular aerial displays. Every year, they migrate for up to 5,000 miles from their Arctic breeding grounds, escaping the freezing cold during winter to spend it on the mild coasts of the D estuary. Within these flocks, there is another special visitor to these grounds, the sanderling. This small arctic bird is easily identified through its pale underside and a grey upper body. It has short, strong black legs and a black beak. Its short beak means it cannot reach into deeper burrows, but its incredible pace means it can run around and feed on anything it spots on the ground. These rich mudflats attract the birds every year, providing food during low tide. The Irish Sea makes it easy for them to find a rich diet of invertebrates, like lugworms, shellfish, algae and crustaceans. It is these crustaceans especially that attract the birds to Hillbrae Island. This island, which is just off the mainland and is only accessible during low tide, provides a vital habitat for rare visitors, like the purple sandpiper. Only 15,000 birds migrate to Britain in winter, and the Dee estuary is one of the best places to find them. All these birds are governed by one thing, the tide. The rich food that is swept in by the rise and fall of the sea levels dictate the birds' lives during day and night. The tides are caused by the combined gravitational effects of the sun and moon, as well as the rotation of the Earth itself. During high tide, the birds roost together. As the water cuts off the land, the tension builds within this oyster catcher flock as nobody wants to get their feet wet. A little scrap here and there is common as everybody wants to be in prime position. Once high tide is over and the water has retreated, the birds spread out again all over the estuary from Hoylake up to Point of Air. Another visitor from the far north, the turnstone, trying to crack open some barnacles. This small wading bird migrates down from the Arctic during winter and is a common sight on coasts all over the world. It appears in great numbers every year on the Dee estuary, with most of them located on Hillbrae Island. Its body is designed to give it leverage and the ability to flip over things like shells and rocks. With its short, strong legs and beak, it has the strength to push things around, unlike any other bird. But the food after a high tide is so rich and plentiful that it can easily be picked off the ground. Plenty of insects and algae for everyone. And after a meal, it's time for a bath. This keeps out unwanted parasites and maintains the plumage in peak condition. Here is the largest wader on the estuary, the Eurasian curlew. 
it can grow up to half a metre. It spends its winter on marshland and coastal mudflats. It's easily identified by its fascinating call and the long, down-curved bill. This bill enables it to feed deeper in the sand than any other bird. It moves around with caution, scanning the area for any possible food. Once it senses something, it can reach far into a burrow with a sensitive tip of its bill, making it easy to catch its prey. This specialised technique allows it to reach burrowing animals that live deeper down in the sand, like certain species of crab and shrimp. This stretch of land also attracts visitors closer to home, the red shank. A native to inland UK during summer, it spends its winters on the Dee estuary. The numbers in Britain can rise from 40,000 up to 120,000 birds during winter, with a large proportion of Icelandic visitors. It is often called the sentinel of the marsh, as it is usually the first bird to take flight at the first hint of danger warning everybody with its distinctive cry. It likes to spend its winters roaming the Dee estuary on the hunt for food. With its elegant walk and its mid-sized beak, it probes the ground rapidly in the hunt for its prey. Life seems great on the mudflats, but the harsh winter isn't as forgiving on the neighbouring marshes. And as the sun sets, predators come out to hunt. A short-eared owl. This bird of prey spends the cold months on these grounds looking for rodents and small mammals. By flying and hovering silently a few feet above the ground, its excellent hearing and eyesight make it the perfect predator. It has caught something, but it senses that something is wrong. A kestrel swoops in, a standoff between the two. They lock their talons in a battle for the kill. But the fight is over quickly, and the kestrel emerges as the victor. The owl has to continue its hunt. Now the seasons change, and as the days grow longer, the waders are starting to leave. Their tremendous journey will take them back to their Arctic breeding grounds for the summer. But before long, they will return for the winter, travelling thousands of miles to a place that is so special and important to them, the Dee Estuary.